Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're talking about the messy side of life. Would you be nervous for someone to go through your car or your purse? How many unread emails do you have? What's in your junk drawer? Do you change your sheets once a week? What's lurking under the cushions of your couch? Join us as we uncover all the deep, dark secrets in our lives. Let's get started. Morning, Julie. Good morning, Marie. Hi, Mindy. Hey, good morning, Marie. It's great to see you guys. I'm really excited about today's topic because it's just so pure fun. Yes. Like <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it required almost zero preparation, and yet I think it really reveals a lot about us. This topic actually came to us from a listener. She said, what about those of us who don't have it all together, who feel like we're flying by the seat of our pants all the time? She said she'd love to hear some real life examples from daily life that make us real and know that she's not alone. So we thought we could come up with some areas of our life that we don't often talk about for fear of what it will say about us. <laughs> and maybe these things don't fit with the image we hope to portray, or we're a little embarrassed, but we're going for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, force, here we come. <laughs> yes, yes. And so we're going to start off with a sensitive area. I was thinking back to when I had preschoolers, and I remember this one mom said to me, oh, I'm so embarrassed for you to see the inside of my van. And I remember thinking, well, how bad could it be? Like, what's it going to look like? But like, I think our cars can mm -hmm. provide a bit of embarrassment to us. So the yes. first thing we were going to talk about was what is in your center car console? And what's your philosophy of like car care in general? Like if someone says at the last minute, hey, can you give me a ride? Are you kind of panicky? So I used to be <laughs> panicky because I think it's different when you're driving around with kids and then when you're driving around alone. Okay. It's, it's just it's just much easier to keep your car clean without kids in it. Right. But um supposedly. One of John's <laughs> well, yeah. One of John's regular statements is that car care is what separates us from the animals. Oh, oh my really? gosh. <laughs> Cuz he is so big on car care. Like he likes it neat and clean. He just says it even usually want to ride in my car. Right. And I don't even notice that it's messy until he gets in it. Like I think it's fine. He starts pointing out oh, all no. the stuff that's wrong with it. It's like it's kind of like God showed up and all your sin is exposed. Oh, <laughs> you know, <man>. like <laughs> things you didn't even know. It's like you can't hide anything from him. Right. So like he doesn't like extra cups in the cup holder and stuff in the side uh -oh. door. And, and, you know, and that I just overlooked that as like, that's just normal. The thing is, Julie, is I want that. Like I want John's car. I'm fighting upstream against six mm -hmm. other people in my family that don't care about car care. And I could spend my life fighting upstream or I could just go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. With kids, you just have to say, this is too hard. I don't have time okay. for this. <laughs> well, I, I guess I find myself happily in the middle, in the front of my van, where I can easily reach things. I do clean out every time I get out of the van. But don't dare turn around and look to the back of the van and see all the half drink water bottles or when I hit my brakes and stuff comes flying out from under the seats in the back. And I'm like, okay, that's not even my junk. And I do tell the kids every time, like, get your stuff, get your stuff. And Marie, it would be a battle. I would have to follow them into the house mm -hmm. and be like, no, seriously, go back and get your junk. John used to say we, he could survive on some food that he would find under our seats. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> Speaking of things that have been under our seats. So, again, acting out of embarrassment, I went to get my car tires rotated and I like to go right after I drop the girls off at school because there's not a big line. So I always eat yogurt on the way to the girls' school. Well, uh -oh. I can't just leave the yogurt like just in the garbage of the car because right. and there's no like garbage can that I could easily like take it in, what take in my yogurt and throw it away in there. So I put it <laughs> under the seat. Well, then I oh. <laughs> then I forgot about it. Oh, yeah. and no, a few days good. later, the kids are like, what is that smell? And I'm like, I don't know. You guys must have spilled something in here. And you guys, it was my fault. Months later, when I was 
you know, vacuuming out the car and actually looking under there. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's that bowl that I thought I would remember to take out after the car tires were rotated. But oh, oh. you know what? That that has happened to us before. Um, in my very first minivan many years ago, I did a major Walmart grocery trip. Over the next couple of weeks, there there was this smell. It just got worse and worse and worse. Could not figure out. Okay, so then finally we start to move the back seats down to prepare for a trip and put luggage in. And we find a bag of frozen chicken tenderloins. Oh, gross, oh. Mindy. <laughs> that have gone rancid. It had gotten lodged underneath the back bench seat, you know, Ooh. like where you can't, like we, oh, I couldn't even see it. Terrible! It was the worst smell. But you know what? When we found it, we were like, "Thank goodness there was a reason," because we were about yes. to trade this thing in. <laughs> yeah, right. we could never figure out what the smell was from. <laughs> One of the times I was most embarrassed because this did not involve my children was when John got in the car and I had. Uh-oh. I had been going through a drive through I guess, and I was eating, and I had gum in my mouth, so I stuck <gasps> it on the gear shift. <laughs> that is so my husband. Thinking, you know, I don't want it to fall on the floor oh, or whatever. Gosh. But not to save it for later, Julie? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I stuck it there. I just knew I meant to get it out before John saw it, and right, I didn't. Right, right. Oh, so my he's goodness. he's just horrified. That's the, like, gum on your gear shift, and it's not even the kids. That's awesome. He's like, what kind of animal did I marry? <laughs> right. <laughs> what kind of animal does that make me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in premarital counseling, they never talk about these things. These no. cause real fights. <laughs> yes. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about our car consoles specifically. Like what is between the driver's seat and the passenger seat? So who wants to go first with funny things or just things in general that have piled up there? Well, my Mini Cooper does not have a center console. Ooh, that would be a negative to me. Have you missed it? No, because if I go back and look at my SUV, the stuff in there is just, I mean, I, had, I think I had a tennis ball, dog poop bags, you know, those little <laughs> bags you take out, oh, gosh. hair clips, a flashlight, right. and a bunch of receipts. Okay. Right. Nothing, right. nothing useful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mindy, did you have anything? I went and looked to see what I have in there. First of all, I have like a million napkins because I'm so afraid I'm going to be without a napkin. So <laughs> I seriously have a Ziploc bag with a million napkins in it, straws. Um, I have a plastic fork just in case. Will I ever use those? <laughs> maybe a napkin here or there, maybe. But no, I'm just worried about my food. Okay, right. I'm being, making a mess. I've got old store cards, like the, you know, frequent customer cards. Mm, okay. I have, oh, I found a wallet. From when we lived in Knoxville, right? Over a year and a half ago. And it's got my Kroger card. Do I have a Kroger here? No. <laughs> I found my once illustrious gold card from Starbucks to show that I was like, I refuse to get rid of this. Mm. They, they printed my name on it and oh, it's gold Mindy. from Starbucks. You have I can't to get that. rid of it. <laughs> like I have, you know, old library card. From Brentwood is in there. I've got a two dollar bill because what do you do with a two dollar bill? I can't right. spend it. It's too special, so I'll leave it in the wallet and the console of the car, <laughs> and forget about the wallet for a year. Oh my gosh! But I also have things that I also use. Like I do have little lotion bottles, Crabtree and Evelyn lotions that are they smell so good. Um, and then I have a pack of dried out wet wipes just in case, you know, somebody, <laughs> something. <laughs> yes. And they're as dry as the napkins. So they're really serving yeah, no yeah. purpose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I'm with you on the napkins though. They're just in my glove box. Got it. We um, always take stacks of napkins and put them in there. Just oh, in we case. do. I'm like, don't throw away the extra napkins. Uh-uh, no. Those go in the van. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What about you, Marie? What's in your center console? All right. Well, I'm totally with Mindy on the baby wipes. Oh, they are so useful. But you're right, Marie. As soon as I need one, I have like sticky hands from something uh -huh. like, okay, well, they're dry. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. So I was looking through my car console. Lip gloss. I never wear lip gloss. I guess I thought it was weighing down my purse and threw it down there at some point. <laughs> I have more pens than I would ever, ever need. Um, I have a Sharpie and scotch tape for the times you go to the post office and you're mailing a package and you just like need that kind of stuff. I probably need it once a year. Why do I have that in there? 
That's a that's like a nightmare item for John because those pins are going to get hot and leak. Oh, Ooh. I've never even thought about that. <laughs> but that's what I he would tell you. That's already what he thinking would tell you. <laughs> of a million and one reasons you could use that duct tape. Like people get loud and mouthy. Hey, I've got the duct tape. <laughs> Rubber bands and hair clips. I mean, my girls have asked me for them so many times. I literally will buy a pack and just keep them in the car. Right. Um, clothes pins for bags of snacks that are long since gone. You know, like you're running out the door and they're hungry. You're like, okay, grab the bag of pretzels. Well, they eat it, but the clothes pin is still in the car. Uh-oh. Tube of poison ivy cream, which my daughter needed two years ago. Okay, why is it still between the cars? Right. <laughs> and and right. I thought about taking it inside and then I don't know why. I just leave it in there. Pennies. <laughs> I yeah. feel too guilty to throw away my pennies because I think, right. like, ooh, somewhere mm-hmm. in the world, someone would be happy to have this penny. But, mm-hmm. you know, like, they get really super gross in the car. They get like gum or like sticky. sticky stuff. I don't know where the sticky stuff comes from. I have the lotion, Mindy, for sure. So many receipts, Julie. You are totally right on the receipts. But one of the funniest things I found was, and I can't get rid of it. Okay, I'm going to show it to you guys, and then I'll describe it to listeners. Have you ever gotten these Life Touch ID from oh. pictures at school? Okay, so they send them home. This is from October 2013. So <laughs> my daughter is now in 10th grade in, you know, seven years ago. She was in about third grade, I guess. And it's from the school pictures, and it's like one of those cards. It has her picture on it, and then it says, what to do if your child is missing? Immediately call law enforcement. Show this image to authorities. Well, I have five kids. Only one child's ID is still in the car, but I can't get rid of it. I looked down at her little face seven years ago, and I'm like, oh, it's just one of those sentimental things that lives in the car. That's its home. Okay, so here's the thing that I've noticed, Marie. You and I need to get a new car. That's the problem. Yes. See, Julie got a new car. She had to go through all her junk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now she just has gum on her gear shift. Like, yes, maybe one day we can do that. I know because our car is from 2007. (laughs) So it's 13 years old. So it's got 13 years worth of stuff that is migrated to it. That's right. Who knows what's in the tracks of the seats and the oh, back? Oh, it's you know unbelievable. I mean? <laughs> and like sometimes I go through the seat back pockets and the kids are storing <gasps> things that are like, right. oh my goodness, let's just get rid of that. <laughs> right, like right. little squirrels. Yes. All right, you guys. Well, what does your junk drawer look like? Julie, you mentioned on a previous podcast that you cleaned yours out recently. Has it since filled back up? No, I'm doing pretty good. I had two junk drawers and now I'm down to one. But, you know, a junk drawer is supposed to be things that you use often and that you want to have easy access to. But I feel like mine is just things I can't throw away. Mm. You know, like there's a few pens and rubber bands and hair clips and batteries in there. But then there's a lot of other stuff in there that I just can't throw away. Kind of like you, Marie. I have my pharmacy school mini laminated diploma in there. Oh, my goodness, Julie. (laughs) That means you've moved that from house to house and it's still gone in the junk drawer. I think it probably was in a wallet and I took it out. Uh Okay. And then I have one of those kids IDs from the missing and exploited children's safe programs. You know, it's Uh David's picture, just David. And I think there's five of them. I have five of them. Yeah. (laughs) Aww. (laughs) And then I have all my original YMCA IDs that we had made, you know, the the larger ones. How funny. Yes. And a couple of library cards and my kids' elementary school IDs, like when they were in a private school. Yes. So, yeah. And then I have a small award won by my daughter at a horse show. It's a little brass plate that you're supposed to put on your saddle when you Mm -hmm. Uh win that. Never made it to the saddle. Uh And then the piece to resistance is a very large tooth. Actually, it's a piece of a tooth from my daughter's horse. No, no, Julie, yes. why is that in there? Yes. And every time I mention it, she goes, no, mom, you can't throw that away. <laughs> you have to say that. I will show you a picture of it. It is it is really odd looking. Okay, so you need to <laughs> ship that to Texas and it needs to That's live right. in her junk drawer. <laughs> That's right. right. Actually, there's just like, that was such a fun time of our life, like her yeah. riding horses and uh-huh. I don't know. I just kind of keep it in a little, I have like a um, divider box in my drawer, you know, in the mm-hmm. junk drawer, and it just takes up a little square. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mindy, what did you find in your junk drawer? 
Well, I am impressed that she even has a divider box in her drawer. Like that's legit. That's yes. that's really nice. Um, you know what I use well, for my we- divider boxes? Apple iPhone boxes. I love those oh, boxes and oh. I just put them all in there till they fill up the drawer. They're the best oh. boxes. I threw a bunch of those away when we moved last. Well, you can use the lid. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, the lid and the box. And they're great. They're so sturdy. Oh they are goodness. sturdy. Huh. And you can turn them different ways, you know. I right. like 10 of those, Julie. I might try that. Yeah. So in my junk drawer, I think Julie's going to be really, really mad at me. Because I have pictures in there that I need to frame. <laughs> oh, no. Aren't they getting Wait, ruined? How big is your drawer? Like, like, well, it's just a drawer. Like, it's just, it's off of my kitchen. There's mm-hmm. like a workstation place. Mm-hmm. And so there's a big drawer in the middle, you know, like a chair can sit at it. So it's okay. that drawer right there. So I looked in there and was like, oh, Julie would kill me. Literally. <laughs> if she saw like these nice printed pictures family pictures that we had made that I haven't framed yet. They're just sitting in there, but they are not alone because I also have old mail, old coupons, those stinking stores that give you the coupon that you have to come back, you know, in right. like a month or two months to be able to use it. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll remember that. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> All right. So those are in there. I've got mail. Of course, school papers from the boys, things that are probably really important that I was like, oh, this is important. Uh I better keep it. So (laughs) I set it on top of the workstation. Well, then Bryce gets tired of seeing it like a month later. Well, not even that long. Bryce gets tired of seeing all the papers and he shoves like he opens the drawer, literally shoves everything into it and closes the drawer. He's like, that's your drawer. Right. (laughs) Because he can't handle the clutter on top. Yes. I have a junk counter. I don't want a junk drawer because I won't see it. Right. I yes. don't know. Sometimes I'm comforted by my junk sitting out in the open. Uh-huh. But um, the last thing that's in there is just story of my life. It's a notebook I started to journal in and I didn't finish. So it's <laughs> in the drawer, which I will never remember. And it's is the there drawer. probably like two pages done on it? There's a couple. I was I started out strong. Um, but yeah, most of it's left. So now when I have to write like a school note for somebody, I can't find paper quickly. So I grab that <laughs> notebook. Because- Perfect. You'll never lose that notebook. You'll lose any notebook you actually bought for the purpose of school excuses, but you'll never lose the journal. The thing is, is I'll finish the journal because there won't be any paper left. Right. <laughs> then you can look like that. you filled it up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I felt like my junk drawer had all the appropriate things like calculator, scissors, screwdriver, pens, measuring tape, glue stick, you know, all the things. But they're just thrown. There is no divider. It's like we know what's in there. But if somebody opened it, they would have no idea what's in there. So they wouldn't realize that, oh, there are useful things in there. Right. (laughs) But similar to you, Mindy, my husband, well, I don't like to see a lot of clutter out. I will say that as our family's gotten bigger, I've been forced to accept the fact that there will be a lot of clutter out. But early in our marriage, maybe even before Abigail was born, we had a huge fight because he had a bunch of papers out and I thought, and he wasn't going through them. Like, I think I had said, will you please go through these and, you know, thin them out or whatever. And he didn't. So I thought that I would be in quotes helpful and thin them out for him. Of course, I threw away some things that he wanted and he was furious. (laughs) So (laughs) since then, he has gotten to have his own drawer. Right. It's Steve's drawer. I am not allowed. If he puts something in that drawer, I'm not allowed to take it out. And I'm not allowed to say, like, can you clean that drawer out? Like, as long as the drawer can shut, we all just, you know. That's fair. Yeah, that actually makes for a very happy marriage right there. (laughs) But it's funny because that drawer just happens to be the drawer that we all put our keys in when we get home. So we all open it frequently. So I do know what's in there. And uh, some of the funny things. Okay, first of all, he's got a lot of tickets like to Predators games, Vanderbilt basketball games, you know, Titans games like games. I don't know. I guess just throws the tickets in there. Um, We have so many keys, keys probably to houses that we don't even remember living in, like so many random keys. And why we don't just go around and say, like, do the keys fit this house and then throw them away? Right. No, Uh -uh. we don't do that. We have our (laughs) checkbook because you don't use a checkbook often, but you need to know where it is. Right. But Julie, our piece de resistance (laughs) is, and I'll never take it out. 
Okay, so I've gotten a lot of flack from my kids over the years for not appreciating church crafts. We, oh, no. I think I've mentioned before that we had a garbage can right by our van, and as we got out on Sundays, the church, you know, Sunday school papers and colorings, a lot of times they just went right in there, because we cannot have five kids worth of that stuff every right. week. Right. But this is a craft that my son made in elementary school at church. It is the sweetest thing, and Steve has kept it in his junk drawer all these years. And if you were going to say, like, what's in Steve's junk drawer, this always is. Do you guys remember Shrinky Dinks? Or do you know Mm -hmm. of Shrinky Dinks? Yes. These were Shrinky Dinks that they made in Sunday school. And you were supposed to, you could make anything you want. But my son, he wrote, Dear Dad, I love you so much. I love when you play sports with me. You are the best. Love, Davis. (laughs) And Steve has saved it all these years in his junk drawer. And every time I catch sight of it, it makes me smile. (laughs) That is so sweet. You know, you could frame that in a little shadow box for him and he could hang it on his wall. (laughs) He's not allowed to hang things on the walls, Mindy. He's only allowed to have his drawer. (laughs) I think that's why we like those things in the drawers because we do open those so often and then you get a chance, you get a little glimpse of the past. Yeah. So my son is 22 years old and he probably made this when he was about eight or nine. So think of all the years we've been opening that drawer. And Mm -hmm. seeing it periodically. That is so sweet. Oh, I love that. All right, you guys, we're going to get super personal here. We are going where no one but the (laughs) woman should go. Her purse. (laughs) I don't know if this is the culture in your house, but in my house, you stay out of mom's purse. Right, you do. I don't want you in my purse. You need something in my purse? I'll get it for you. That's right. Is that how it is in your house? Yeah. I, the kids don't go in my purse. They're not allowed to. They can bring me my purse so I can get them something. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think they want to go in my purse. (laughs) There's gum in there, Julie. (laughs) Well, when I tell you about something else that was in there, it it could be dangerous. Oh, well, do tell. (laughs) Okay. Well, my purse, I usually carry a large bag. Uh-oh. And uh, it gets pretty junky. Everything falls to the bottom. There are no little side pockets or organization. Oh. Everything's just in the bottom. That's dangerous and right there. covered by yeah. lots of receipts. <laughs> okay. Oh, my. <laughs> so this was probably 10 or 15 years ago, but I had gone to a pampered chef party and I won a paring knife. Oh. And, you know, it's just those little plastic handled knives, but they're super sharp. And it had a little cardboard protective sleeve on the blade. Well, I just dropped that thing in my purse and forgot about it. Over time, a long time, the little sleeve worked its way off. Oh, no, Julie. I reached in my (gasps) purse and cut my finger. Blood was on my purse. You must have been just shocked at what was in there. I was. That hurt so bad. And actually, it was such a sharp knife and such a clean cut. I didn't even know what hit me at first. And then I pulled my hand out. and, (gasps) And I knew that thing was in there, but I just... I don't know. I just didn't think about the little sleeve coming off. and Right. Hmm. Well, I guess right. that was preferable to one of your kids putting their hands in your purse. Yes. And I'm cutting kidding. their finger. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. And I bet you told that story to John and he had zero sympathy for you. Oh, yeah. It was like, <laughs> Julie. Why would you put what a you knife thinking? in Why your purse? Why would you put a knife in your purse? Yes. <laughs> and I'm never one to have anything helpful in my purse. Like if people say, oh, do you have a Band-Aid? No. Right. Give it. Oh. Bill, I have a headache. No. Look, you know, I never have anything I have a receipt. useful. Yeah, I have lots of receipts. I have paper. Do you need paper? Yes. Yes. And then I just, that's how I make lists and notes. I just find the back of a receipt. Yes, oh, I've done that Lots before. of uncapped pens down there in the bottom, too. Oh my God. Well, that's funny, Julie, because your bags always look very stylish. So to the outside eye, we would never know what lurks below. Oh. <laughs> All right, Mindy, what's your purse look like? I used to carry the cute tote bag. I've gone between like the big bag and the small bag. And my life completely changed when um, my kids got a little older. I got rid of the big purse. I was like, I am no longer carrying anybody else's stuff but mine. And I went to the small crossbody bag. Mm. Hands-free shopping. Mm -hmm. It's a safe place. I didn't have to hold it. It didn't hurt my shoulder because it was so heavy from all the stuff that was in it. Right. And um, I fell in love with the minimalist purse at that point. 
And so I am not carrying a crossbody purse right now. I have a super cute little one with a scarf tied to the front and all that. But okay. I think I would describe myself as the fancy minimalist. My purse gives me something very feminine and cute about myself in my tennis shoes, messy hair, and workout clothes. Mm-hmm. And it's really saved my life a lot and cleaned me up a lot to be able to put a note on my phone because I used to have like paper notes everywhere. And so that has really cleaned up my purse. I guess I'm kind of in the middle of you two because my purse is pretty clean. It can get messy and then I'll clean it out. But I do try to have helpful things in there. Like I definitely have ibuprofen. Either I'm going to need it or the kids are going to need it. I have Band-Aids. Mm-hmm. I have gum, I have lotion, pens, I have a calendar, like I have things in there. All right, you guys, dishes in the sink overnight or you always clean it up before you go to bed? Always clean it up before I go to bed. Julie? I don't always clean it up. I'm fine with a few dishes in the sink, but then John will come clean it up. Okay. Oh. <laughs> John's not fine with a few dishes in the sink. <laughs> I clean up the dinner dishes. Any snacks that people get out after that, just wait until the next morning. Right. That's kind of what I do. It's not big things. Yeah. yeah. Laundry. Do you finish it in one day or do you do it in stages? I feel super successful if I actually do that. How about we put it like that? Otherwise, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. I do laundry every day or, or just about. If I haven't, then I'm getting behind. Like, I don't know. I, I couldn't I couldn't wait just for one day. Like people would be without clothing. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Now I can wait. But I'll say I've done laundry and that just means I've put it in the washer. Okay. It doesn't mean I've turned it on, put it in the dryer, <laughs> folded it and put it back in the drawer. And John goes like, oh, I thought you did laundry today. I said, I did. Yeah. I, <laughs> so he's like, OK, up. what phase are my T-shirts in? Because I need to. <laughs> yeah. See, that's where I'm at. Like I can I can wash it and dry it and I can't seem to always fold it on time. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, Nathan had to borrow underwear from Jacob last night because <laughs> I did not get it done. (laughs) Okay. How about towel folding? Is there a right way? Yes, there is definitely a right way. And people in my house cannot get it right. right, How do you do it? (laughs) It's like you fold them in half, then you fold them in half again, then you fold them the other way. That's how I do it. Okay. Mindy? (laughs) I... I honestly don't care. Like if somebody is to fold a towel, I'm super thrilled. (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't care. I mean, if somebody did it differently. I do it a certain way, but I could care less if it gets folded differently. I'm like, oh, good. It's folded. Right, right. (laughs) All right. How often do you change your sheets, Julie? Uh People don't think less of me after this, but I do not change them every week. Um, I don't know if that's some standard that you're supposed to do. Oprah said that. (laughs) Okay. Well, well. what is your standard, Julie? That's what we really want to know. Yeah. My standard is just whenever I feel like it. So (laughs) it could be months. (laughs) No, I would say two to three weeks. Two Two to to three three weeks. weeks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I don't have sheets to like put back on. I just wash those and put them back on. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. Mindy, how about you? I am a once a week washing my sheets just because I thoroughly enjoy it. I also change my sheets once a week just because I really like that for myself. Okay, do you ride on an empty gas tank or do you fill it up at the halfway point? Let me guess for this. Mindy, I feel like you live on the edge. Okay, I did. And I got in trouble. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) I was told by somebody that I live with that I needed to keep it above half a tank. Okay. And so I love this person so much that when I see the half tank, I'm like, Oh, I better go fill up. And so I've had to change that habit. I used to be like, Oh yeah. Eight miles left, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Julie, how about you? Yeah. There's definitely been times when I've tested the limits of my gas tank and the, and the light that comes on. Right. Right. But when I had my SUV, it took so long to fill it up at the gas station. Yeah. And if I was running late, I thought, oh, I don't have time for that. And I'd pass the gas station. Up, and then I'd just feel guilty the whole way there. Like, what if oh, I run yeah. out of gas with my kids in the car? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so now my little mini just takes a, a minute or two to fill up. So I don't mind pulling into the gas station and filling it up. I definitely about halfway start feeling like I want to fill my gas tank up, but that's because I'm cheap and I don't want to be caught at the most expensive gas station 
having to fill up. So Ooh. like um, I was down to Costco yesterday and I was a little below half, but the lines for the gas station were unusually short. So I'm like, I'm filling up now. You know, right. so I will That's take right. advantage of cheap gas and try to fill up. But I definitely really don't like to get below a quarter of a tank. I mean, of course, that has happened to me many times, but I don't like that feeling. Do you go to bed with makeup on? I'm just going to say flat out, no, never. I, I have to wash my face. You guys? Me too. I have done it maybe once or twice, but I feel so bad in the morning. It's just yeah. not worth it. Even though I don't really enjoy washing my face at night, I, at night, I know I'm going to regret it. Oh. So I, I do it. Yeah. Is your email inbox zero or 100,000? <laughs> Has it ever been zero? I don't even know. We actually moved to separate emails because it bothers Steve to see unread emails. It really doesn't right. bother me that much. I think yeah. my threshold for emails is I go between 30 and 90 messages. Okay, well, messages. that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Like it gets to 90 and I'm like, okay, it's, we're getting close to 100. I better clean them out. Julie, I know your email box is a mess. <laughs> Uh-oh. I just checked. I have 133,543 emails. Oh, my goodness. Just start <laughs> over. <laughs> I don't even look at them anymore. You have to text me and say, I sent you an email. Please check it. Because <laughs> I have 30 to 40 a day that are from people that I don't even know. They're just businesses. And you, I've tried the whole unsubscribe. And then two days later, they're back. So it's just, right. I just need to start over. I am not going through all those. And I, you know, I thought about just a mass erase, but right. I'm afraid yeah. of things like, you know, there'll be one or two in there that I need. And so it's just uh -huh. way too overwhelming to go through. So I just need a new address, but that scares me too. Like yes. I'm going to miss stuff, you know, I don't know how to oh, do it. Oh my goodness. Yes. Camera roll on your phone. Would you characterize it as, you know, pretty organized and not just filled with a thousand pictures? I feel like mine's decently organized. I do go through periodically, especially if I'm like bored at appointments. That's a good time for me to delete. Mm. How about you guys? I have over 50,000 on my phone. Oh my goodness, Julie. <laughs> but they're organized. I mean, okay, they're, or okay. they're, they're all my albums and everything. Okay. Oh, wow. So, Mindy, what's your camera roll look like? Okay, well, now I don't feel as bad. At the same time, I'm completely unorganized. I have 3,200 pictures on my phone and 429 videos. Oh, my goodness. That's so many, Mindy. <laughs> I know. And they're not organized whatsoever. Like, I am terrible with pictures. And I don't care. Like, okay. There's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just like I said, I have pictures that need to be framed in my junk drawer. <laughs> you must have a lot of storage. I think that's the problem. Maybe, Maybe I shouldn't buy a phone that has so much storage. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, would you characterize yourself as an on-time person or can people count on you to be late? I am on time. All right. That's great. Ab I am absolutely on time and I find that everybody else is not. <laughs> okay. Julie, are you on time or a little late? It kind of depends on what it is. Okay. Okay. What would you be okay. on time for? Like I, w I would be on time for a job interview or an appointment, like a doctor's appointment or whatever. Uh -huh. But if I'm beating you for lunch, I might be running five minutes late or oh, yeah. um, church. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little late to church. So, yeah, it kind of depends on what it was. Generally on time, but okay. you know, right. not, not ever too late. I would characterize myself as on time if there's a reason to be on time. So doctor's appointment. They might charge you or they might say, sorry, you missed your appointment. I will be on time. Even if I'm meeting someone for lunch, I feel an obligation like I should be on time. I'm never going to be early, but I will be within that like five minutes where it mm -hmm. could just be that my clock runs a little slower than yours. You can't really <laughs> right. tell. But That's right. <laughs> I feel the freedom to be late for things where I don't really see a good reason why I should have to be there at that time. So what would be a good example of an event like that, Like Marie? things that my kids tell me, like I need to be... <laughs> <laughs> like, mom, pick us up at 3.15. Well, why? Because I'm just going to sit in the car line. I'll come at 3.30 and just sail through the end of the car line. Why would I need to, you know, like, why? Or, you know, my mom gets kind of mad at me, but she'll set a time for, like, the family gathering. 
for Christmas and it's 3.30. Well, I know there's a lot of other people going too and they can visit right. with them for a few minutes. It's not going to really <laughs> be a big problem if I'm there at 3.45. But, you know, nine out of 10 times I'll get a call at 3.40. Where are you? I'm oh, no. on my way. I'm not just going to not come, but like I can't see the reason that it's like an emergency <laughs> that I get there right on time. <laughs> I, I understand. But, I mean, you're giving them the gift of each other before yeah. you show up. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly how I feel. Right. I do enjoy being fashionably late for parties. Okay. So if I've gotten like dressed up, it's not something that I think, oh, everybody's going to watch me walk in. It's more that it's really annoying to be on time to a party and nobody's there yet. And so you kind of want to let people show up so you can just walk in and start talking to people. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. I don't ever like to be the first person. No, like no, me yeah. neither. Well, I loved this question that Julie had. What's a sad dinner you enjoy every now and then? <laughs> <laughs> Julie, I cannot even imagine like why you thought of that. You must have been having a sad dinner. And a what is it? <laughs> I know. Well, like I, w- I would be fine having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for dinner or a bowl of cereal. And okay. that sounds sad, but I would be fine with that once a week. Yes. Yeah. yeah I like that too. And I enjoy cooking and having good meals sometimes too. It's not sure. that. It's just, I can be fine with just that. Right. right. You should have seen the looks on our kids' faces when we're in Vermont at the ski resort. And they're like, what's for dinner? I'm like, peanut butter and jelly sandwich that we brought from home. What? Because <laughs> because we had like the resort meals. We, we decided we would eat out once a day. Okay. And that the other meal would be something very simple. Mm-hmm. I brought peanut butter and jelly from home. I'm like, this is all we need. We had a big meal earlier. We yeah. spent a fortune. Like, right. yes, it's PB and J tonight. What? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to die. I'm like, you're really going to be fine. I bought creamy and crunchy peanut butter. <laughs> oh, Mindy, you were <laughs> yes. so generous. I yes. know, right? <laughs> Someone posted the other night, it was so up my alley, and I sent it to my daughter. The woman said something about, like, my husband's out of town. This is the kind of dinner I'm serving tonight. We call it snacky dinner, in quotes. And it was a picture of crackers and cheese on a plate (laughs) and some cut up peppers. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that was what the kids were eating. And I sent it to my daughter and I was like, oh my goodness. I said, this is totally me. You know, until you have boys that hit puberty, you can get away with snacky dinner. You can right. serve whatever you want. And your husband's out of town, so he doesn't even know. You know, it's the best. It's the absolute best. Now, once your boys hit <laughs> puberty, they're like every yeah. night, meat. Where is the meat? So I can't get away with snacky dinner. But if I'm home and it's just the girls and me, we're having snacky dinner. Right. Well, Well, when I make snacky dinner and David's here, he just cooks uh, scrambled eggs and he'll eat six. He cooks six (laughs) eggs. I'm like, that is half of my eggs. David, a man after my own heart. So, you know, it's like he's getting his protein. He can take care of himself. Right. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Well, when I read like sad dinner, my first thought was when I don't want to make anything like you go fend for yourself. That's the sad dinner. And then I look at what they're eating and and it's (laughs) typically cereal. And I'm like, Oh, well it's, you know, it's frosted mini wheats. So that's, you know, that's at least going to fill them up. (laughs) Right. Right. For sure. Okay. I already know someone amongst the three of us has a little problem with this. Do you get speeding tickets or get tickets for expired tags? Okay, I'm just going to say right now, I never have. So it's one of you two. I never have. <laughs> lie, Julie, you lie. <laughs> no. Okay, they were so long ago that I can't remember them. They Uh-oh. were, yes, you're right. They're not a part of my current life. Did oh you seriously gosh. forget about your speedy tickets? I've turned over a new leaf, Marie. I'm just, I don't even identify with that person How anymore. do you not speed in your Mini Cooper? That would be so fun to fly places in. I don't speed anymore. I don't. Okay. Really? I learned my lesson. <laughs> Oh, my God. No, I did. Okay, I confess. I confess. This was probably more than 10 years ago, but I got two speeding tickets within a certain amount of time. So I had to go to the driving school. 
which was at night down at this middle school in Franklin. It took me forever to get there. And I remember this <laughs> judge ran the school and you had to sit there for like three or four hours listening to these, you know, watching these car wreck videos and him <laughs> saying, you know, it does no good to speed. Studies have shown you do not get there any sooner okay. and certainly not safe, you know, and and so that so, turned a corner after for you. that. I do not speed. Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, I have been pulled over for speeding, but I have not been given a ticket for speeding. Okay. Going back to the time thing, you guys, do you ever miss appointments? Do you look down at your calendar and you're like, what? That was today? Well, I kind of have the opposite problem. I, I do keep a calendar. I write things on the calendar and then... I either don't look at it or I read it wrong because I <laughs> tend to show up at my kids know this about me. We have shown up at a dentist appointment, a doctor's appointment, and they'll look at me kind of funny and they'll say, oh, that's next week. Oh, really? Oh, no. Or yeah, like I get the whole week wrong or the whole day. I've got the time right, but I'm there on the wrong day or the wrong week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And a couple of weeks ago, Marie, I didn't tell you about this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, um, the Fusons Life Group Party. I don't think you guys were there. Okay. Um, it was supposed to be on a Sunday night. I had been seeing the group chat, talk about Sunday night, everything. Well, on Saturday, John had been busy all day. And I said, you got to get home because we've got this party tonight. And I was even taking two hot dishes. So I had to get home, get the food prepared, got it all prepared. This is on Saturday. Oh, my goodness. We drive over to their house. And we were a few minutes late, fashionably late, you know, like 710. Uh-huh. And no, there are no cars there. And I thought, this is a little odd, you know, that at 710, nobody would be here. So I look in and I said, oh, I can see her in the kitchen. They're home. You know, so John has these hot dishes. Oh, no way. And he gosh. walks up to the door and they're in sweatpants. Oh, and she man. goes, oh, she said, that party's tomorrow night. Oh, my oh, goodness. Julie. And so I am just dying. And so... <laughs> I, we just leave the food. I said, can I just leave this food here? <laughs> because Oh, it's that's a good done. idea. And we'll yeah. be back. She goes, can you come tomorrow night? I said, sure. So John gets back in the car and he is not happy. Right. <laughs> well, he came home early. I know. Oh. He goes, I would think this wouldn't be such a big deal if it hadn't happened so many times before. Oh, oh my no. goodness. And oh, I was no. like, can we just laugh this off? Like, I... <laughs> Right, I was just trying right. to make really light of it. He goes, Julie, I could if this just didn't happen repeatedly. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that is too Julie. funny, Julie. I love it. I mean, I wouldn't love it in that situation, but I love it. No. We did not tell anybody. We went to that party the next night. Dee Dee and Greg never mentioned it. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. <laughs> Wow. So now I'm confessing. Oh, wow. This is a big one. <laughs> All right, Mindy, do you have anything that can possibly follow that story? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Nothing compared to Julie at all. Like, <laughs> I know. I mean, well, that's I, a good thing. <laughs> I've been yeah. late a few times to pick people up from practice. And just this morning, Mindy and I forgot what time we were recording. And Julie's like, hey, are we recording today? But how yeah, ironic that, that I'm the one that got it right. Yes. <laughs> Those are small potatoes compared to Julie's problems. <laughs> oh my goodness. Julie's just so excited. She's like, let's go. <laughs> let's go early. <laughs> All right. Well, this will be our last one, listeners, before we get to our I'm a fan. All right. What is the worst thing you've ever found under your couch cushions? I could make another dog out of the dog hair under my cushions. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's always popcorn. I found candy wrappers, things like that. But probably the oddest thing was I have found like a spoon and a fork. Okay. Yes. And I think, how do you not know? Right. <laughs> you dropped your utensil. It's true. So they just ate with their hands the rest of the meal and wiped them on your cushions. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I have found, Julie, are really? a spoon and a fork. And I'm like, seriously, somebody was eating ice cream with this spoon and, and it's in the couch. Like, so how does that happen? Like you get up and you're like, obviously you finished. Right. Um, but yeah, socks. I have found socks that yeah. are not ours. Like it's from other people. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah. For years, I had the ugliest couch known to man and would not replace it. And even still now, I would be so hesitant to ever buy a light colored couch because mm -hmm. I can't tell you the number of blueberries I have found under Ooh. our couch cushions. 
both of my boys like to make blueberry smoothies. Uh-huh. And you would think the blueberries would be pulverized. I don't know. Do they take a handful and then eat them on the way over to the couch with their smoothie? But I, oh, you know, a blueberry be. under your couch cushion, it, it really ruins it. Like Those you know, stain. Yeah. They stain. So, yes, I found blueberries. I found all manner of food, really. Right. No kidding. Yeah, we have couches that are brown leather, both upstairs and downstairs. They're not my favorite. But when I think about replacing them, I just know I, right now I couldn't. Yeah. Right. With our dog. You know, I just right. couldn't do it. All right. Well, this has been so fun. I love hearing about all the ways that you guys have messes in your life, just like I um, do. Yes. <laughs> I hope you don't think less of me. No, I think more <laughs> of you knowing this, Julie. <laughs> right. Well, I feel like there's things that we like to have very clean, right? That we mm-hmm. spend our time doing. But you have to have a level of mess in your life to be comfortable. And Mm -hmm. this is my house, my car. I don't want to feel like I'm in a hotel room or somebody else's car. Like we live here. So (laughs) yes, you do what you can do. Some things just don't meet the threshold of priority. You know, sometimes you just don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Or sometimes you care and you just know that this is not the season that I'll be able to accomplish this. Like, yes, I would love that, but you know, it's not worth my battle. Right. Yeah. Well, someday I might have a white couch, but Oh, <laughs> I don't know. There's hope for us, right? Yes, there is definitely hope for us. I just want to know what we're going to do when we can't blame the sorry state of our cars on our kids. Um, well, I already can't. So. Wow. I guess that's when grandkids come along, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move into our I'm a fan. Mindy, what are you a fan of this week? I'm actually going with a cleaner. (laughs) Oh, all right. It's appropriate for today's topic. It is. I just have the toughest time cleaning my shower. And I have tried multiple products um, of, of how to get the shower, all the mold, the soap scum, the everything off of the shower. And finally used this product. It is not new, but I loved it. It's CLR bath and kitchen and it's a foaming spray. I spent seriously an hour. This sounds bad because that's how dirty the shower was, Uh but I literally spent an hour cleaning my shower using this product. Their fumes were not bad and it cleaned the shower beautifully. So I am a huge fan of the CLR bath and kitchen foaming spray cleaner. Awesome. I'm going to have to check that out because that's the bane of every woman's existence, the shower. (laughs) Yes, it is. Julie, what are you a fan of? I have a Fitbit and the band broke or tore. They're uh kind of like a rubberized band. Right. And so I looked to replace it. It has a white band and I found these on Amazon and they are silicone replacement bands and you had to buy 10, but I think it was 10 for $10. Mint green, a sage green, a blue, a pink, a black, a white, a gray, and a red. Right. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have an Apple Watch, but have you seen there's a lot of um, ribbons? I thought about you, Mindy. I like oh, silk, oh. Um, silk scarves, run them <gasps> through and tie knot. It's so I cute. Seen oh, that. I bet oh. that would be super cute. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm a fan of improvising. I have been looking for some curtains for my dining room, and I just couldn't find any long enough curtains that I liked. And I was in Target this week and I finally found a pattern that I thought was cute. But of course, all of Target's curtains are 84 inches, which is not long enough. Right. So I just wanted to give a little tip to listeners. You can improvise. If you take out the bottom hem and the top hem and hang them by the curtain hooks, you can gain about eight inches. Good idea. Yes. And so it was a fun project for me. Like, I didn't mind. All you need is a seam ripper, that right. stitch witchery tape, you know, to kind of do uh, the hem, wow. you know, with your iron. And right. um, I already had the curtain hooks and everything. And it was a fun project. And I felt like almost like I had made myself curtains. No kidding. <laughs> because even though I had bought them, they weren't usable the way I bought them. And so well, I was going to say, like, you just go online to Target Online. And they have longer curtains on their website than they do in their store. They do, but I couldn't find a pattern that I liked. So I don't think they have all the patterns. 
That's true. You know, yeah, you yeah. can always get everything. So I have I'm been impressed looking. That you did that. That sounds like a lot of work. Oh, it was fun work though. You know, I mean, I I listened to an audio book while I was doing it, and you know, I didn't mind nice. doing it. And I had actually done that to the same pair that had hung there before. So okay. I, I knew that it, you know, it wouldn't take that long and it was fun. So if you fall in love with some 84 inch curtains, you can make them longer for $0. Right. <laughs> great idea. I love that. That's great. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, this was so fun talking with you and I'm going to feel so much better about the messes in my life. <laughs> Listeners, we would absolutely love to hear what you find between the seats of your car or That's under right. your couch cushions. <laughs> Send us your stories. We would love to hear them. And we hope that you've enjoyed this episode. It makes you feel better about the things that are lurking under the surface of your life. All right, you guys, it was great talking to you. Yes, so fun. Yes, it was fun. Good to talk with you. All right, we'll see you next week. All right, see you. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. We're so happy you joined us today. If you'd like to get the show notes for today's episode, please email your name and address to Midlife Matters Podcast at gmail.com and write show notes in the subject line. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.